All right, so let's begin with the first question. Here we are having an equation of a line and an equation of a curve where in both the equations, k is acting like a constant. In the first equation, here is the value of k. In the second equation, here is the k. Right? So in both of them, k is acting like a constant. And we have to show that this line and this curve are meeting for all values of k. Right? All values of k is important. So first of all, what is the meaning of meet? Meet basically means intersect. Now, when, when we are having a quadratic equation and a straight line, we know that it can either not meet at all, it can meet at only one point, or it can at max meet at two points. So if I visually have to show that to you. So let's say that this is a quadratic curve, and this is a line that is given to us in the format like this. So now we can already see that I have created a condition of one point of intersection right over here, which is called as when this line is acting as a tangent to this curve, that's one point of solution. Now everywhere else, if I just shift this line upwards, we can see that we are having two points of solutions, right? And there is one more condition that we, we are not having any kind of solutions, right? When these two things do not intersect at all. So when we are having that, we have to prove that this line and this curve are meeting. What does that mean? That at least at one point, right? So either this is the condition or this is the condition anywhere in between, right? So how can we solve this? So what I'll do is let's go step by step. I'll just remove these lines over here. And now because we know that these things are intersecting, like when they are going to meet each other, they are going to have the same Y coordinates. So I'm simply going to go ahead and equate them. That's my first step. I'm going to equate the Y values. So that I get 3x minus 2k is equals to x squared minus kx plus 2. So what have I done? I have made a quadratic equation that if I go ahead and solve it, I'll be getting the values of x for the point of intersection, right? If it's one point, I'll be getting only one x value. If there are two points of intersection, I'll be getting two different values of x. But right now we don't know what's the kind of condition, right? This is the simple quadratic equation that we have made. Now, which we can go ahead and solve it. Now, in order to solve it, it should be in a proper quadratic manner where we are having one x square term, one combined x term and one final constant, right? And then that's equal to zero. So let's convert it into that format. So now this becomes x square. I'm shifting everything on the right hand side. So this minus kx, and when this 3x goes on the right, it becomes minus 3x. So minus is going to come out in the common. Then we'll be left with k plus 3x. Now, if you will open this bracket, it becomes minus kx minus 3x as we wanted. And then the final term, that is a constant term, the c term, it will be 2 plus 2k. And I'm clubbing them together inside a bracket. And now everything is equal to 0 because on the left side, we don't have anything. So that's 0. So now we are having a quadratic equation, right? So now we have also studied from this whole chapter, a concept of discriminant. So whenever we are having this equation in the format of, let's say we are having a quadratic equation with the X axis, let's say like this. We know that in order to have at least one point of solution, that is this case, the discriminant should be equal to zero. And for the condition when we are having two solutions, we know that discriminant is greater than zero. So now in this mid condition, both of them are going to be there. One condition or maybe two condition or one solution or maybe two solution. So that's the thing, but greater than equal to zero condition. So what we are trying to do is prove that discriminant Ignore my spelling if it's incorrect, but yeah, prove that discriminant is greater or equal to zero. Now that the whole question is boiled down on this particular thing. So for that, we'll have to see what is the discriminant of this equation. So for that, let's go ahead and find it. So therefore, b square minus 4ac is called the discriminant of a quadratic equation, where this coefficient of x square, which is one in this case is a, this whole term is b, and this term is c. Okay. So b square is minus 
k plus 3. And if I square this, minus square becomes positive 1. So I don't need to show that. But yes, we are having k plus 3 square. Then minus 4, a value is 1. So that's basically 1 over here. And c is 2 plus 2k. And now, if I simplify this, it's going to become, let's say, k squared plus 6k plus 9. Then this is 4. 4 times 2 is 8, but there is also a negative sign. So negative 8 and negative 8k. Okay. And if I simplify this further, we are having k squared, then 6k minus 8k is minus 2k. 9 minus 8 is 1. So this is the final quadratic equation that we have got of this discriminant. And we have to prove that this thing is always greater than or equal to 0. What do we have to prove? We have to prove that this thing is always greater than or equal to 0. Now, how can we do this? There are multiple ways of doing this. Now, just because I want to show you that what exactly is happening, I'll go ahead and sketch a graph of this equation. Right? So, let me get rid of uh, this thing. And now, draw the graph of this particular stuff. So if you go ahead and solve this, I mean, if you try to create a factor of this, maybe use your calculator or if you can do it manually, this is nothing but k minus 1, k minus 1. So there is basically one point of intersection that is on 1. right? So let's say this is our x-axis or k-axis in this case. And this is the value called 1. And this whole quadratic curve is now going to look something like this. Or like I'll just draw it in a proper way. So there is one point of intersection over here. And now we have proved that no matter whatever is the value of k, this curve is always greater than or equal to 0. Right? It is never going negative. It's either equal to 0 at this point. Or for any different values of k, it's above the x-axis, right? It's greater than x-axis, basically in the positive y-axis. So by just drawing this curve, we are able to prove it, that this will always be greater than or equal to 0. Or in other words, you can also say that this is k minus 1 whole square. So now because this term is squared, we know that if the value of k becomes 1, this will be equal to 0. Or for any other values, because it's squared, it will always be positive. So always positive or equal to 0 when k is equal to 1. We can also do it in terms of just by the equation, no need to draw the graph. So all these kind of things are possible and that's the solution for the first question.